Hey everyone, it is Tuesday. You know what that means. It is time for another wrestling review. As you can see by Campo pointing to his hat, it is a New Japan review. It is the review of New Year's Dash. Since last week's three episodes went so well, we're doing another three episodes for you this week. So tune in tomorrow and Thursday for other reviews. You'll find out what those are at the end of the show. But today we are focusing on the night after Wrestle Kingdom, New Year's Dash, um, basically the concept of New Year's Dash, the reason why it's called that is because they just put a random bunch of matches together. Nobody knows who's the part. Yeah, nobody knows who the participants are. And it basically sets up feuds for the year. Yeah, you know what? And it's funny because I've gone back and watched New Year's Dash, but obviously mm -hmm. I ha I started watching New Japan in what, July or Yeah, you uh June with uh Dominion. With Dominion. Um, like slightly before Dominion, and um, it, I've seen New Year's dashes, and I I never really got the concept of it, but I get it now. Yeah, and it's like well, because even when I message you, feud, you're like, that's a thing. Every single feud from it, for this whole year has been created either out of Wrestle Kingdom or from New Year's Dash or G One. Yeah, but the G One kind of stuff all came to a conclusion yeah. now. Yeah, that's true too. But yeah, yeah. So we'll start with it for the first match of the night. Then we have House of Torture, Evil, uh, Yujiro Takahashi, and Dick to go against Tomaki Hanma, Tiger Mask, and Ren Rita. There were some funny, funny comments on this. Uh, what's his name said? It's always good to start the new year off with a bit of dick. Yeah, you know what? It's funny because he fully has they've everyone on the commentary team fully has embraced the dick to go joke yeah like not dick togo it's dick, dick to, to go. go yeah and even then what do you say uh chris carlton charlton asked him if he ever spent any time in australia with gino and he goes yeah dick spent a lot of time in the bush <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, 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 you know what generally this match was kind of actually funny it was it was a half decent match i didn't mind it and it set up something uh in the end for ren narita for the year right so um house of torture it's a fun little match great little opener um the uh, the house of torture win the match um then they pr uh, proceed with a beat down of ren narita and who but Minoru suzuki come out to save him so now you have the support of suzuki behind narita which let's be honest doesn't make any logical sense yes i i like the idea of it mm -hmm. because it gives Narita um, relevance Purpose, even yep. more if he already hasn't had enough play wrestling with Tanahashi and like all the stuff that's been happening. But this gives him like, you know, like he matters now. Now people are like, oh crap, let's pay attention to him, especially the Japanese fans. Yeah, audience. But Suzuki's done. So this doesn't set up he, anything. If this was him joining Suzuki Goon, okay, you know, a whole new thing. But it doesn't. But they disbanded. It's just him putting his support behind. And it's kind of like it's good and makes no sense at the same time. Yeah. Unless Suzuki's trans uh, transitioning to become like a manager, a role model, a mentor. Well, we know about the four guys. I guess that's going to come up soon. So we'll wait yeah. for that. But for that, but yeah. Um, yeah. Decent match. Uh, next match, we had uh, Taichi, uh, Yo Yoshinobu, Kanemaru, and our boy Duki. The against... Duke, sir. The Dukester against the uh, United Empire, Will Ospreay, TJP, and Francesco Akira. Basically, Will Ospreay and Catch Two Two. I, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. For how like talented the match on paper was, mm -hmm. didn't live up to it. There, I, I felt like everyone was tired from the previous night. Yeah, and they and just kind of have. You can see, it. you can see that Osprey didn't put all of it, all of his effort into it, kind of thing, and and he picks up a second loss. Dookie gets the pin in this Duke, match, sir. which is weird. Like he's probably the, the, out of those six, he would probably be at the bottom. No. Yeah. It, it's weird because he, his existence is as if, as if he's like a legendary type wrestler yeah. kind of. Like he exists in this realm of like, well, everyone knows Doki. He's been around. He's been forever. here a long time, yeah. But it's like at the same time, what the hell has he done? At least in the last year, yeah. and he hasn't been injured. We've no. watched New Japan for the whole year, 
and he's had no relevant storyline or matches hand, or handful anything. Handful of matches, maybe. And they all with the sucked. exception of his appearance in the junior tag. Yeah, Was which it, yeah. they sucked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wasn't the greatest match, not Osprey's greatest showing. You could see Osprey was like exact, completely exhausted from this, uh, uh, from this match. Uh, next we go into the brand new TMDK, uh, TMDK 2.0, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr., Mike Nichols, and Shane Haste against Chaos, Ishii Goto, and Yoshihashi. Again. I think I think this is setting up Tomohiro like at the end of the match it's setting up Tomohiro Ishii versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols for the tag team championships against Goto and Hashi. If TMDK wins the tag championships, I've lost all faith in New Japan, especially their tag division because yeah, they think... made they made Bishamon look like superstars losing to FTR. Yeah, so, if, if... or beating FTR I should say. So that that FTR's loss will mean nothing if TMDK wins. Regardless win the of. I'm trying to think how to say this. Regardless of whether they hold the title or not, if at the next tag, uh, world tag, mm-hmm. if Bishimon even finish anywhere near the top, I'm riding because you can't keep having the same team win every year and then yeah. you give them the title and then you immediately take the titles away from them. Yeah. It doesn't it make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's poor booking, yeah. They, they won back-to-back years and won the title at last time and lost it like right away to FTR. The next day, yeah. Or not to FTR. Um, Con and... Uh, Con and, and Cobb. Cobb. And then they lost it like a week or a month later. Later to, to yeah. FTR. But uh, yeah, uh, it's basically this was to set up another feud, basically. Uh, next, we're actually breezing through this today. Um, next was Shota Umino, Toge Makabe, uh, Ryosuke Toguchi, and Yo against LIJ of Naito, Sonata, Bushi, and Takahashi. Well, let's talk about two two things here. Number one, mm-hmm. the entrance by Shota. Yes, that was really really good. Full John Moxley. It is through he the crowd. And everything. He's yeah. gonna he's going to do this every time now. He's established that like this is my thing, and I think it's good for him. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm like John Moxley, he's actually a good wrestler. Yeah. And um, to have him in this match with so many so much great talent, this yeah. sets up this sets up the next sets up the next sex match. It up. Sex it up, baby. But, um you're getting another feud out of this too. You got you're getting Naito versus Umino. Yes, in a weird way, because now Naito's already tied up in something completely different, but we're mm-hmm. also trying to establish something and it's just you could have drawn this out more. They pushed. They they jumped the gun. Yeah. I think. They like, we knew this, we knew this was coming. Yeah, and they talked about what's happening in this match a lot. They made a lot of points to uh, to uh, what's it called? Keno versus Naito in the second night of uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, the second night. Yeah, but they made the a second lot of reference night, to... four weeks later. Second yeah, night. and they're doing a lot of promo for it too. Hey, it looks it's come on. Come on, we watched. Yeah. We watched the the Noah event mm-hmm. and gave it a high score too. We know that this match is going to be epic. Mm-hmm. This is match of the year type stuff right there. It's content. Yeah, it's definitely going to be up there. Um, and but yeah, what an entrance by Naito too. I loved him waiting it out. He yeah. went to go step up the stairs, and the announcer was getting, and then he walked back down, and the announcer was like, "Crap, what?" Because they don't, nobody knew that he was going to do this, right? Like this is a full shoot. Whenever Naito's doing these things, yeah. Absolutely. They don't, they don't. And he's uh, like, well, it takes a step up. The guy's like, and then he steps back down. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Um, and then they're, they were all holding the ropes for him and he didn't want to get in where they're holding the ropes. So he just kept walking around the ring until they stopped holding the ropes. Yeah. But it did also set up another good thing. You're getting, you're probably going to get Yo versus Takahashi for the junior heavyweight. Finally, Yo's going to probably get some recognition. Hopefully. I want to see Leo. When the junior when the tags? tags, okay, but we didn't see Leo Rush in this, so I think well, he okay. may be we, hurt. We, we jumped the gun earlier, so mm-hmm. Zack Saber Junior. Yes, is facing is going most likely going to face Ishii. Ishii is like the king of New Japan at getting first matches into the first feud, first feuds for belts on belts that don't really matter. 
Yeah, it, I think his, because his he's earned is that based around this like. Yeah. You're it's the deep. never open weight guy, and it's like nobody wants to be. The reason that big guys Tanahashi's and Naito's win or never open weight is to pad their their Wikipedia, so that now you could be like, oh, well, they're a Grand Slam champion. Yeah, they're, they're a, a triple, a triple crown. crown. Yeah, triple yeah. crown. That's why they win it. No, your permanent life, like Tai Chi's and the the Ishii's of the world, are permanently mm-hmm. stuck in this division. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now all we've done with the TV title is open up a new. Like, realm yeah like i'm surprised because... they don't take the strong title and and let ishii like reign as like the top of the strong for like a year you know yeah and let him just demolish everybody in strong you got to get better to beat me basically well, now strong got a full facelift too which we're gonna have to talk yeah. about in our recap but i mean in our uh state of wrestling our monthly but... yeah that's coming that is what it is I, yeah. I I actually liked this match, Naito and yes, and Shooter mostly. Yeah, it that that's going to be a good feud. That's going to be that's going to be something that's going to probably happen at Dontaku or Dominion. Or is he it going to happen a, on one of the new beginning match. nights? He had a match. Okay, uh, a big match at oh, Forbidden Door mm-hmm. in that six man tag. Then he had a huge match again against Will Osprey. Then he had a huge match again in uh, KG Muda's last mm, final match. match. Yeah, and now he's going to go into a feud with Naito. This guy's We're, career is it's like skyrocketing. It's 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 he's gone already. He's. I would say I would space. say within the next twelve to sixteen months, we may see the world championship on him. I may even see him. I could even see him winning the G one this year. I I will agree. He with the G one. I will say he's not going to win the title, but then he's going to, he's going to win the G1. This is a good thing. Lose. Like, he's going to lose at Wrestle Kingdom to whoever it is. And then he's going to win the never open weight title. And he's going to hold that for a while. Okay. Okay. I could, I like that. And then not the year after, but 2025, probably win the G1 again. And then in 26, win Wrestle yeah. Kingdom. Yeah. I could see him double holding the U S title and the never open weight. At some point. Yeah. The thing is, who does Kenny Omega feud with? I think it's going to be Naito. You think so? I That's my thing. Like, I, there's so many. We know, by the way, they're talking. Yeah. That something needs to happen in Naito's career because it's the last chance. It's the last yeah, chance. Every time it's the last chance. It's, he's got to get a belt. Yeah. And Kenny Omega slash Naito is already talking about best matches of the year. Yeah. And you could have a three match series of this where Naito loses both times and then wins at wins like the, the big event. Yeah. You know, like loses once then, on TV, loses and once That's where we get the culmination and... with Umino. Yeah. We get the exactly. Naito Umino culmination and Umino wins the belt off of. Uh... Yeah. As you can tell, I'm very confident that Forbidden Door 2 is happening. It's happening, most likely. <laughs> um, that's where we'll probably get Naito versus Omega. That is a cash cow. Yeah. Yeah, that that's gonna make you could turn a that into a, a event, a full time event at one a yearly year, event. Yeah, where it goes one year Japan, one year U.S., one year Japan, one year U.S. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. Yeah. So this is gonna, like I said, this match set up a lot of things, but they, like I said, this is mostly padding for where they're going with Tetsuya Naito. Yep. Naito is gonna be a big player within the next year. Just four guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, going into the next match, we got God, Gorillas of Destiny of Hikaleo, Tamatanga, and joined by Hiroshi Tanahashi against and Master Wado against the Bullet Club of Phantasmo, Jay White, Kenta, and Taiji Ishimori. Literally did not give a crap about this match. Just even gonna with, be honest. Even with uh even with some of the names in this, eh? Even it, with Jay it, it White. It just wasn't a, a, anything to like care about. Does that yeah. sound crazy? Like I was just like, okay, thanks. Yeah. I mean, uh, this this does set up the Jay White versus Hikaleo because he blames Hikaleo. The, yes. The the events that unfold out of this match. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all this match was for, was to set up the event because we're getting. I think it's on the fourth night of New Beginning. I think New Beginning Sapporo, the second night. It's going to be Jay White versus Hikaleo in a loser leaves Japan match, Which... and clearly. It's it's looking like it's going to be AEW now because I don't see Jay White going to Vince With McMahon Vince. WWE. No, 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 no. His no. character, he will get changed to become like 
uh, a native Aborigine New Zealand yeah. person that yeah. wears like a playing a didgeridoo. Yeah, and... like oh my god. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can totally see Vince doing something like that. Well, god damn it, he's Australian. Let him. I'm from New Zealand, mate. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> I I don't see it. No, and he has. I watched a bunch of videos recently. He has said multiple times that he. He, he's had nothing but enjoyable experiences working with AEW. Yeah. Um, Imagine if Impact see, got him. I was going to say, not Impact, but Ring of Honor, and he just runs chaos over the heavyweight division. Hey, in Ring you of Honor. already have juice over there, so... It's it's already setting up... It's Your feud's already there. Your feud's already there. Um, yeah, this feud. basically just sets up the loser leaves. Uh, Bullet Club lose... Hard. Sorry. Uh, Bullet Club lose by TQ because uh, ELP smacks Tonga with the belt. Yep. And uh, I honestly think Bullet Club is done. It's going to phase out. It's it's splintering away. It's going to... I think there's going to be a full-on match. Dis- where they just Bullet disband. Bullet Club versus... Uh, United Empire? United Empire and whoever loses has to disband. disband. Yeah. I think that could happen. Because you know why? It's not a. This is not a ridiculous idea. You can, like I said, if there was anything you want to carry this on, you let Kenny Omega lead a team called the Elite from AEW, where they has carryover people in New Japan. Yeah. Right. So it's not the Bullet Club anymore. It's the Elite. It's the Elite. And then you do a couple years from now, a split happens, and Bullet Club comes back. Right. Because if Jay White does leave, who who's going to lead the Bullet Club? ELP. Right? No, but you. This is Chase a whole Owens. thing, right? Imagine, imagine what I said. You get ten years from now, a retired. Now he's a manager, like Gato Tomatonga, comes back to New Japan, signs a contract, and is like the like the Don Callis, but recreates Bullet Club, like the new I, club or something. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, I could see that happening, but I yeah. mean that's good, right? That's well, I mean that's the thing. Jay White never came back, and that's, that's kind the thing. of like. Jay White leaves. They're without a leader. They're they're going to be splintered. They're going to be all over the place. You already have, have a few. Yeah, they already have a few subgroups, right? So, but uh, yeah. Next, we have our uh, four way match to determine the provisional KOPW twenty twenty three champion. Now, because the trophy was destroyed, they have that uh, baby blue belt. Yes, which we did talk about at length in the other video, even yes. though it didn't happen in that video. But we, for some reason, treated it like it did happen. Yeah, um, where Shingo unf- walked away, or Shingo yeah. won the that night, but uh, Khan walked away with the belt. Yes. So, spoilers. Sorry that it happened. We spoiled it for you then. But yeah, hey, okay. but um, we didn't know it was happening. Yeah, and so now he has the belt. Yeah, Shingo has the belt. So is this now a championship that's going to be defended? Is this a belt now? Well, it, it's going to be treated like the trophy. Yeah. Anyone can challenge you at any time, and whoever has it at the end of the year is the champion. Kind of like the 24-7 champion. I think that's how this is going to be treated. Yeah. Um... It's not a it's not a big belt. This is this exists for the sole purpose to give some kind of levity to Shingo. Yeah, because well, he's using the fact that he won in 2022 to set up the match against him and Okada. Which and this that was a great setup. Yes. Oh, you have a belt. I have a belt. belt. Well, this happens later, but so they're going to unify the belts. I don't think because, they're going to unify. No. The belts. Well, because Okada Okada said, "Well, I'm the one who created this tournament." Right. So it was his idea. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, and, but, and Shingo was the champion for almost the whole year. Yeah. And he showed a lot of people who that he was the daddy. Yeah. And uh yeah, this but this was a good match. I didn't mind it. Um no, this was actually the maybe better the match. best match. Probably the best match on the card, yeah. Uh well, I mean the next match was pretty good too, but it was different. Um but yeah, Shingo Shingo wins again. He is your 2023 provisional KOPW champion. Um, he gets the little baby blue belt. Uh, Shingo just needs more recognition. He he won't beat Okada, but he should. I I yeah. hope that's the next plan for a feud. Because, like, I know we're gonna talk about this in like a week, but yeah, I feel like Okada does not need. We talked about this already at Wrestle Kingdom. He didn't need the belt. 
No, I understand you let him win stats. because you're taking Jay White's leaving, so you're just stripping him of the title and you give it to your guy, your go-to guy. This is your Hulk Hogan. It's, you're it's like, oh, basically give it giving it. Uh, oh, you're you don't you can't be champ anymore. You're leaving, John Cena. Yeah, exactly. Take the belt, John Cena. Take the belt, uh, Triple H. Yeah, and it's like oh, that's fine. I understand that, but you can't. He cannot hold this belt for long. He needs no. To but the thing is, he's okay. For someone like Okada, it's fine for him to lose the belt after a month because he's already established as a yeah. superstar. You let him go with he's Chaos a and win a the the trios title. You yeah, know? yeah, he, absolutely. If you give okay, Shingo like, some type of goal. I, I don't want to take away from Okada. You know, I'm not the biggest Okada fan, but I appreciate him enough. Yeah, he. If you look at his trophy case, he's only ever won the world title. Yeah, yeah, that's all and he's G1 ever won. Climax. Yeah. So I think it's time to give Shingo, our boy Shingo, some love. Let him win the belt. Yeah. Let it happen. So, yeah. Um, so our final match of the night is Omega and Okada, something we'd never we'd never thought we'd see. No one teaming. ever thought they would see this because the crowd was absolutely baffled by this. Yeah. And people I, who I have had you... seven eight star matches, whatever they've yeah. been. I, I imagine that at least 30% of this crowd peed their pants when this happened. Probably. Because I was shocked. I don't even know if shocked is the word. I was like elated. This was like the one. This is for me as a new returning wrestling fan, the greatest moment that's happened to me in my watching wrestling. Because it's like the guy that I consider my favorite wrestler yep. of all. I mean, mind you, Naito's my favorite New Japan guy, but my favorite right. wrestler, Kenny Omega, and having gone through all of the story with this Okada stuff, and then having them be together and and joyfully together, yeah. they smiled and they shook hands they had fun. and they had fun together, and it was a good match. Yeah. The only thing is, it was good for one of the people in the match, which is Aaron Her- uh, Aaron Harane, because Hanare. it's a good young Hanare, whatever. Um. <laughs> But Jeff Cobb, that when Jeff Cobb entered the ring, it was like, oh, Jeff Cobb. But Jeff Cobb wrecked house for a bit. He did. But when you think Omega and Okada together, you think like Omega Okada against like Tanahashi and somebody else. Like, you know what I mean? You think I, big yeah, names. That's fair. I mean, I can understand putting Hinare in there because he's one of the guys, one of the new guy, one of the young guys you're pushing. Fair. Um, but Jeff Cobb, like, I don't he doesn't belong up there if you don't, if you ask me. But I'll tell you what this is. This match would have been Khan and Cobb, but because Khan wrestled, they had to put someone into Phil. I yeah. don't think I. You know what? Hold on, sorry. Yeah. I don't think this match at all was in any way. To no, it try didn't and suffer. And yeah. Aaron Hanare over. As much as we watch and we're like, why wouldn't you do that? But I don't think this match was designed for that. I this think was this designed was to pop the crowd with Okada to pop the and crowd Omega. and make sure that they had a good enough opponent that they it didn't look like it was a walk in the park. And we do have this like still ongoing rift between Cobb and Okada since the G1, where Cobb yeah. like demolished Okada for the whole match. And then I, I did he he lost in the end. He right? lost that. Yeah. The only loss that Okada had was what to to Jonah. Tom, to Jonah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now I haven't seen him in on TV for five weeks, six weeks. Rightfully so. Yeah, as the Miz's lackey, no. I want to see Jonah go to NXT and face Boron Breaker. That I'd like to see. Okay, I'll take it. But, but yeah. Nah. Um, hey, yeah. this is this is a top ten moment. It was. Yeah, it's them already just standing a top 10 in the ring with the, the two titles. This is almost as iconic now as Nakamura hugging Muda on the way up the ramp. It is. There, those are we've established two, th- three already. Okay, we'll give three. it three because Julia and Shuri. After, After three years up and coming yeah. back, and then her winning her first uh, stardom championship, stardom championship, and Shuri being yeah. like the queen of female wrestling as right now, uh, PWI would have you believe, yeah, and. Which Just, after watching some of her matches, I kind of have to agree. Yeah, on. it's fine. We, I think we're going to agree on a lot of things. Yeah. coming out of stardom because they're excellent. Yeah. I showed my buddy recently the highlights from that match, and he was like. Holy crap. I'm like, yes, that's what yeah. women's wrestling should be. Could be. Yeah. Um, where we'll get to something that set it back 20 years uh, yeah. shortly. Ooh, tomorrow but night. It's um 
It was a good I, show. I think Dol- Dol- we had three top ten moments of a- an entire year already, and in, all in, in Japan. Wrestling. All in Japan, three different promotions. Yeah. So we know which. Go- you know what? Next year on the year end review, top promotion of the year. Yeah, well, we're we're going hard. You guys are going to get a lot of lists. Th- yeah. th- we're going to have to just blow through it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I mean this was a good match. I I genuinely think the Shingo match was better. Yeah, but it was. You could see that Kenny and Okada had no gas left. Yeah, that's why this match went short. It was only, there was not a single match that went over fifteen minutes. No, and it was a very a, short. You would show. imagine that this would have went long. Kenny looked hurt when he was coming out from, and yeah. then dude, the man went and and did he the trios, trios game seven. What a match! Two days later, like oh man, two that's days up for match a week, of the year. not even a week later. Like, we we saw how many matches of the year already. Like get out of here. Yeah. This is 2023 is the year of rest pro wrestling. It's going to be, yeah. Only if Vince dies before he sells the company. <laughs> Mickey Mouse <laughs> is going to kill him. Oh, hey, folks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good show. Um, Not as good as the Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, okay. This was like a weekly show with yeah. a better card. The yeah. ma- not that the matches were better, the card was just was... like spectacular. Yeah. Um, um I rated it pretty high as well. I didn't, but okay. I also didn't give it like a low score. I gave it a 7.3. Okay. Um, I gave I... it I gave it much higher than that because I really enjoyed it. I gave it an 8.1. Hey, you take as you win some, you lose some. We we had this split already on the last one on our Wrestle Kingdom, right? Yeah. Where we were both on opposite ends of the spectrum for that. I but... just liked it. I I gave it a higher score because it set up so many feuds. The card itself could have lacked something, but it was a shorter card. Like it wasn't as long, fewer matches, sets up so many things. And we had a lot of good moments. And like yeah. you said, a top 10. That's why that's I don't think anything was between... bad about yeah. this card. There was just I nothing just don't spectacular. Think there was nothing spectacular. It was all the story setting up and then the special moments for me that yeah. gave me the score that I landed on. Um, I would not have gone lower than a seven, no matter what. I think this was yeah. generally a well put together thing. We didn't even talk about the four guys. Can we just talk about the four guys sure. quickly? Go for um, it. Before we leave. So uh, who was it? It's Doki, um, Takamichi Noku. Noku. Yeah, that new, the new faction, Desperado. And what's his name? Taichi. Taichi, yeah. Yeah, are now the four guys. So this is my thing. Where does that leave Lance Archer? Does Lance Archer now become like, does he move to Shoda? Does he become like a backer of Shoda and Maybe. become like his bodyguard? Well, Archer's part of AEW still, isn't he? Yes, but he's still part of Suzuki Goon. And that it leaves it, he's the only person that we don't know where he stands at this yeah. point. Right. And it feels like. And we know that there's a strong backing for Shota from the American wrestlers. That's where most of his yeah. stuff comes from. Danielson and Moxley. And they all Chris put over Jericho. this guy's praises. Yeah. And so, you, I mean, you, and you have Minoru there saying, I back this guy, which makes yeah. me think that but what Lance Archer backing has to have also some Ren Narita. So yeah, maybe we get point. something with Archer and Narita. Archer and Narita. Maybe Archer yeah, and Yeah, because Tanahashi... Okay, so okay, this is weird because Shota has every... Everyone seems to have Shota's back. Yeah. So let's stick with just Ren and Narita. I, would, I could see... You know what? What if what if we get Archer and Narita challenged to Motor City Machine Guns for the strong tags? Yeah, yeah. I, I think... You know what? I think you get... You, we might because you got to put some... After the loss to... Ren Zach- Narita is going to get shipped over to the new the new new Japan strong and has he gone and on because excursion it's in the yet? States. Yeah, I, I believe so. He's back from excursion. Okay. Um, He'll be in the U S if he's in new Japan strong. So you yeah. can have Archer show up at all the, the events, right? You can have Narita show up at some ROH events. Like uh, that could be foreshadowing. That could have been why this whole thing happened. Kind of like the way they're pushing to Yeah. In the geez, U.S. That guy is so good. Yeah. Oh, this guy's so good. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. Kishet, Kishet, That's the end Kishet of this video, guys. Yes, it is. So with that out of the way, guys, thanks again for joining us. Make sure you join us tomorrow 
tomorrow we will be reviewing something that was not as good. It was New Year's Evil, NXT's first offering of the year. Um, tune in tomorrow, Wednesday night, to hear our thoughts on that. And with that out of the way, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you all next time.